throughout the presentation so that uh, we can get through the information tonight. Um, again, uh, those of you who just joined us, these are some precursor slides with things leading up to the summer games and other information, such as the Brave and the Attempt talks. Um, very good information. If you've never been to one of those, highly recommend or check it out. We have our pint-sized polar bear plunge on July 15th, a new fundraising event. The 2024 plunge uh, online registration is up and ready to go. And then um, from a really important thing here in regards to healthy athlete screenings and um, the schedules for those going on uh, throughout summer games on Saturday and Sunday at the Universal Union at Towson campus. So we'll let this go through one more feed or get back to one of the first slides on this presentation and then we will get right into the head of delegation webinar. All right, Joyce, can you give me a thumbs up? You can see the first slide. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining tonight. This is the 2023 Summer Games HOD or Head of Delegation webinar. Um, tonight we have Mike Sarnowski, our Vice President of Sports, myself, Steve Bennett, Senior Director of Sports and Competition, and Jane Dunn, one of our um, go-to people on our management teams uh, throughout the year, uh, serving in many capacities. So We'll go ahead and get ready and get rolling. Well, once again, uh, this will this is being recorded, as you noticed, um, and we will post this on our Summer Games website um, under the coaches resource, and also uh, that's where you can find these slides as well. And we'll send the link out um, once they are ready within the next uh, twenty four to thirty two hours, give or take. Um, once again, please stay on mute throughout. Um, if we have a question, you can raise your hand, depending on where we are in the presentation, we may pause and ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question, or you can always uh, type it into the chat um, function, and we will be monitoring that throughout, whether it's myself when I'm not presenting, monitoring those chats, questions, or comments coming in, or Mike uh, when he's not presenting. <laughs> so, um, as we uh, go through the quick agenda here, what we're going to cover tonight, um, logos and maps uh, for summer games, the general schedule. Um, Jane will talk about the housing information. And again, thank you all for uh, your communication with Jane. Uh, registration information, some summer games updates, uh, a little bit of information about transportation, block party and auxiliary activities throughout the games, uh, meal services and other general updates and information. Uh, we'll get into a little specifics about the opening ceremony um, and then uh, remind everybody about the event guide and the coaches resource page uh, and then give some uh, brief outlines and diagrams, if you will, regarding the competition venues. And at the end, uh, we will uh, either address the questions as we go throughout the slide deck or save your questions till the end and we will hang around as long as we can to help address any of those questions. First thing, the unveiling of the logo. If you haven't seen this in other coaches' webinars or whatever, I'm um, inclusion, the final frontier. So um, it's kind of a take on uh, both uh, Star Wars or Star Trek um, for any uh, Star Wars heads or Trekkies or whatever. Um, there's little debate about going on with that, but pretty cool. Again, the, the big thing there is inclusion. Um, so I thank our communications and marketing team for putting that uh, logo together this year. This is the overall kind of Google map of the area. Uh, those of you who may not be familiar, this is your first time serving this capacity. Um, you can see uh, this is the main campus of Towson and the auxiliary streets coming into the uh, campus front. Um, some of the main streets are the Osler Road or Osler Drive um, and Towson Town Boulevard, et cetera. So a lot of stuff on here and we'll uh, zoom in a little bit more on the next slide right here which gives you kind of a rundown and layout. And again, um, this is available in the event guide as well. Um, some things to point out here is uh, housing locations, which Jane will touch on in a minute. Uh, we have the West Village location and we have the residence halls, uh, residence tower, and then the other tower um, right over here as well. Um, with that, all, all dining 
um, as far as breakfast in the mornings and dinners in the evening for those officially registered delegates who are staying overnight on campus. Uh, we'll be in the West Village Commons in the dining halls. Uh, that's on the third floor. Uh, go over a few parking locations uh, for track and field or athletics over at United Stadium, lots four and five. Um, cheerleading is lot six, eight. Uh, I've got to do my count as they just recently in the last year or two changed their lot numbers. Um, the lot seven, which is behind the CQ arena, no parking available there as that's where the block party and Olympic Park are scheduled. Uh, there's also a lot six down here at the soccer stadium, which has limited parking. I don't think there'll be much use for that um, and um, other things there. So again, United Stadium is the home for track and field or athletics, cheerleading in the Towson Center. Uh, we have Bocce over at the Burdick Field area by the University Union and University Union Garage, where most people will park for Bocce. We have swimming inside Burdick Hall. Most people using that facility or visiting there park in the Towson Town uh, Boulevard garage. Um, this is the University Union, kind of located right between, if you will, swimming and bocce. That's where a lot of the healthy athletes, well, all of the healthy athletes functions will take place. Um, that's also where you as the head of delegation will come to register on Thursday um, at 2 p.m. That's when it'll open at least. Um, and that's where in the first floor, um, so if you park in the University Union garage, you walk out this little spot, come right in, and we're right there on the first floor, on the on the ground floor level. <clears throat> um, third, let's see, that's, yeah, that's Thursday. Then Thursday evening, we will all get down here to the West Village Common area. That's where we'll have dinner and the HOD meeting. That's on the third floor in the ballrooms. Again, this map uh, will be on the slide deck for your reference, also has been posted on the event guide for a while now. Um, so general schedule. Again, we talked about the delegation registration, University Union first floor on Thursday from 2 to 6 or 2 to 5.30, hopefully, uh, now that we don't have to uh, deal with all the t-shirts and distribution of those and inventorying of those and all that. Um, hopefully you guys found that really helpful to get those ahead of time. Um, and then the HOD meeting slash dinner from six to eight, as I talked about in the West Village Common area, where all of the meals will be taking place throughout the games as far as breakfast and dinners, again, for those who are staying overnight and are officially registered. So hopefully everyone knows Friday is when we start the big bang of the summer games, if you will. Um, so the control center, which is in the Minigan room, and let me back up a slide. I did not mention where that was, especially for the heads of delegation. The control center for the entire games is in the Minigan room, which is on the press box side of the United Stadium. Uh, for those of you who've been there before, it's the same location as in years past. Uh, there will be signs, et cetera, but that's where you guys will come uh, with any questions, uh, issues that are at that level of the overall games. Each competition venue will have their own uh, control center from a sports perspective, if anything's sports specific. <clears throat> Um, cheerleading comp competition is our first competition of summer games on Friday uh, in the morning. That competition will start at 10 in the Towson Center. Uh, and we also have swimming starting in the afternoon. Uh, those are the only two sports that we have on Friday for competitions, if you will. Uh, as I talked about, the dinner will be in ballrooms A, B, and C in West Village uh, from 4 to 6. Then we'll uh, head over to the block party between 5 and 7.30. We'll have some merchandise and other activities, etc., um, and then the opening ceremony starts at 730. Um, and then uh, Mike will talk briefly about the staging of parade of the, for the parade of athletes in the CQ arena, which is the representatives for each of your delegations. And you can see the coaches meetings and meals. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Uh, it's been in the event guide. You can use this as a reference. Um, Saturday, again, we get all the competitions going across the board, except for cheerleading. We'll conclude on Friday. Um, everything else will be up and running. Um, softball, uh, as a head of delegation, just hopefully you know this, that softball is down in Ellicott City at Kiwanis Wallace Park. That's where we had one of the uh, major required qualifiers for softball. Um, as I mentioned, healthy athletes will be up and running um, on Saturday. Uh, really highly encourage you and your coaches. We've talked to the coaches about it. But if you could reiterate that to get as many people to as many stations as possible during healthy athletes. 
Obviously, a competition schedule takes precedent, but um, I will say it has it it has been. Um, the screenings are free. There's good follow up care afterwards, uh, depending on what the what they find, what the doctors, et cetera, find. But it is life changing and has been in the past absolutely life saving. So don't take that as a oh, we'll get there. Maybe, maybe not. Really, really um, highly encourage you to get there and your coaches get as many people through as possible. Um, Olympic Park will be up and running six to nine. On Saturday evening, up in the CQ lot, same as the block party leading into the opening ceremony on Friday. Um, we will have a head of delegation meeting, um, six to seven on Saturday evening. Um, most likely that'll be over near the control center, but we'll let you know about that um, on our meeting um, on either at registration or on Thursday evening at the uh, HOD meeting on site leading into summer games. Obviously, the dance will be up there at the Olympic Park that evening as well for Saturday. Then again, you see the, the shifts of meals and the coaches' meetings uh, for the sports-specific information. Sunday, same kind of basic uh, thing. We'll have all the competitions going on um, and the breakfast. Uh, one of the things here is Jane will hit on, but just make sure whenever you're checking out on your last morning that you turn in your keys at the front desk. With that... I'm going to stop talking for a minute and hand over the mic, if you will, to Mike. No pun intended. Hi, folks. Um, again, if you've been with us before, this is pretty straightforward. But if you're new, um, we'll just go through a few things here with registration. Um, tomorrow, oh, today was the last day to make any scratches and have them not count towards your games fees. That had to be done by noon. Um, uh, and so tomorrow, we will send out rosters that will uh, have, uh, similar to the batch I sent out uh, a couple weeks ago, which will have the breakout by sport, as well as your overall. Um, anyhow, so look for those sometime tomorrow. Uh, the divisioning and scheduling information on there will not necessarily be final. We're still playing with that. So um, it's not something you want to immediately send out to all your coaches and family members and athletes and so on down the line, um, but just because it could cause some confusion. So, uh, and that's particularly around uh, uh, swimming and, bot and uh, track, where the specific uh, division numbers can be very helpful. Um, we'll have those nailed down uh, in the very near future. We anticipate having the, uh, the, the Bucci reports and similar things, the time sequence reports, all that for track. Uh, posted by Wednesday of this week, uh, and similar reports for swimming uh, shortly thereafter. But don't send this one out uh, just because, I mean, it's not super secret, but we just don't want folks to uh, think that that information is etched in stone. Um, I will say, again, with the the, the opportunity, uh, I guess a week and a half ago, you have any last chance changes that you have the only changes going forward at this point will be scratches. So, um, and if you could, I know you're trying to be very, very helpful throughout the week and sending me uh, scratches and so on down the line. At this stage in the game, quite honestly, it's easier just to wait until um, uh, Thursday when you check in, because I'm gonna miss some. I, I mean, I promise you, I can. I, there aren't many things I can guarantee you will happen, but I can guarantee you I'm gonna miss <laughs> marking some scratches if you're sending them in uh, in that uh, in that manner. Uh, when I send those rosters out uh, sometime tomorrow, I'll include a copy of the scratch sheet. We'll also have hard copies of those on site, but um, you can mark those down. Um, but I do believe as of anything that I have been told about as far as a scratch as of, um, I think this afternoon is up to date uh, and will be reflected in here. Um, so on-site registration, again, will be on Thursday. Um, and uh, that's not six to eight, that's two to six. Sorry about that. That's the, uh, the six to eight is the HOD uh, timeframe. From two to six on Thursday, June 22nd, uh, this is gonna be, we're, we'll be back in the University Union where we had previously done it, but we'll be on the first floor. Um, so we'll be in that big lobby area there. Um, should make it easy. Uh, probably best bet is park in the uh, University Union garage. Steve will touch on parking with that, although he did send a thing out 
uh, to folks um, uh, sometime last week related to parking on Thursday. Um, so, uh, but uh, we'll get all your scratches and uh, and get you checked in. Um, you won't have a bunch of boxes since you've already gotten your shirts, but you will still be picking up the credentials for all the registered delegation members, all the souvenir pins. Um, if you have folks staying on campus, you get your room keys and meal cards, uh, such from Jane, and then there may be some additional miscellaneous items, uh, but should be relatively quick and we'll have Bill DePaw there doing it again. One reminder, um, and I think everybody on here is well aware of this, that we are only credentialing as coaches, those individuals who have up-to-date coach sports certifications that are valid through June 25th, uh, which is the last day of the games. Um, so, I mean, we've had this stuff posted for several years now in terms of being able to look it up. We've been talking about this um, in terms of implementing it uh, this year. I can assure you no athlete was impacted in terms of not being able to attend summer games because their coach was not did not have their sports certification. We're not implementing anything like that this year. Not saying that won't ever come, but that's nothing that's going to happen this year. The only consequence is that they may not be, the coach may not be uh, credentialed or have a credential that says coach on it. It might say assistant coach if that's what they have earned. It'll be whatever the highest um, uh, certification is uh, that they've earned and maintained, I should say, because it could have expired. In many cases, they did. Uh, in a lot of cases, a uh, person who's serving as a coach or has served in a coach throughout the year is going to be a volunteer or a sport volunteer for your delegation. So um, again, the current the transcripts and such um, are there. Do not have anybody go and rush and try to take a course and submit it. Uh, a That's the week of the games. It's ridiculous, really. The only uh, negative for the coach here, other than not having a credential that says coach, is that uh, in most cases, they won't be able to follow protest. Um, but at this point, we we're not accepting any more uh, forms or anything like that. Um, so don't um, uh, don't even bother with that. Uh, Steve, you want to go to the next one? I'm not sure if that's me or Jane. This will be Jane in regards to housing information. Jane, so if I'm you're ready. on, take it away. Hi, everybody. Uh, looking forward to seeing everybody on Thursday. Um, so not a lot will be different. Um, obviously, every year we're in different um, buildings. Um, so um, as Steve and Mike just mentioned, uh, registration and housing opens up at 2 p.m. Um, and I am, I did not send anybody times. It's I, I don't think it's really necessary. People can wait a few minutes. It never takes very long to go through and hand out the keys. So whenever you arrive, um, just stop by. Uh, if there seems to be a lot of people and you have other things to do, please uh, take advantage of that. Um, and just to keep in mind, uh, on Thursday, you have to get that parking permit uh, that Steve sent the email out. And I, I um, did notice that even though it says um, parking lot eight, that it does count for every parking lot on campus. So you don't need to worry about where you park your car as long as you've got the provided them with your register your uh, tag information. Oh my gosh, there's a cat behind Carol. <laughs> so um, the there's a couple of things. Um, you know, we're using Residence Tower, and I, I want to thank all of you for getting stuff to me. I know I it was kind of Maybe maybe sending everything out this close to the event is a good thing because it doesn't allow you to make a lot of changes. But anyway, um, I really appreciate everybody getting their material to me by getting the um, changes to me. Today, I just had one, I believe one person that withdrew an athlete and they aren't scratched. It's just they're going to um, be driven by their family. Um, so fingers crossed that we won't have a lot of changes to be made with housing when everybody arrives. Um, as in the past, um, you will be dropping off the keys in your building. 
What will be potentially different, and I'll have more information for you on Thursday, is in the past, a Special Olympics has been much earlier in June. And so there hasn't been a major issue if um, I get requests for late checkout on Sunday. That may be a problem this year because they will, they have a lot of events starting on Monday. And so they have to turn all of a lot of the space around to accommodate the next group that's coming in. They did say that if they can't um, offer some late later checkouts, that they we can at least use the um, the multi-purpose rooms on the various floors in the um, dorms uh, for luggage storage. They can be locked. So, um, but I will hopefully um, have more information and find out if there are any specific buildings that it's going to be more of a problem than others. So I'll keep you posted. Um, uh, another thing, um, as you've all been told, uh, Tower D, there's a lot of construction going on there. So just be sure. Um, Stuart, I'll get to that comment as soon as I did talk about this. Um, if you are staying in Tower D um, and you are dropping people off, number one, follow the signage because there is a lot of construction, but you will be able to, um, to get to Tower D. Um, if you are dropping people off and there's going to be somebody with your vehicle, um, you don't need to worry about paying for parking on, um, it, what what street is that? Cross Keys or something? I don't know what it's called, but anyway. I think it's Cross Campus. Cross Campus, the one that's right in front of the towers. Um, you, If you uh, leave your car there to let um, athletes off and you're going to be leaving your car unattended, you need to take care of the parking. I think they have um, those machines where you get a ticket and you put it in your car. Um, because that is not part of our um, Towson parking. So just to keep that in mind. Um, and then you can, there is that parking garage um, that's kind of behind the towers for people who are keeping vehicles there. Not quite sure how one gets to that parking garage, but um, I believe that anybody staying in the towers will have access to the garage somehow. Um, and I'm not sure if the um, the campus map shows how one can get to that garage or not. Jane, there's an entrance to that garage off across campus. Okay, so you can Further park down. there for for the event. And starting on Friday, there um, are no requirements for a parking permit. It's just just on Thursday. Is I correct me if I, that's a, an incorrect statement. Um, Sorry, Jane. Yeah, you are correct. The and I, I touch on it later. Yeah, the and I forget who it was. I think it was Dottie Turner asked the question. It says the parking ends at seven p.m. on Thursday. That's because that's when they stop checking right parking leading into summer games. So after so Thursday after seven p.m., they're not looking for license plates or parking or whatever as long as you're parked in a good legal spot. <laughs> okay. Um, I did get a question um, about uh, um, if you are not coming on Thursday and there's uh, periodically um, and usually very often Garrett or some of the delegations come in uh, Friday morning. No problem. I will have all of the keys at the control center in Minigan and I will be available. Um, I will. Um, I think everybody should have my phone number because I put it in all my emails. You can text me um, and just let me know when you're going to arrive. Um, if you do have any issues with a few people that may be coming that you might not see and you've picked up everything, let me know because I can leave those keys in, your, in the buildings and just leave a note saying that they'll be picked up by the individuals um, themselves. But um, I would prefer that all the keys be picked up if possible, um, either Thursday or Friday when you arrive. I'll be there all day Friday, just kind of 
hanging out, uh, doing what needs to be done. And so, but I should be around the control center most of the day. Um, I think that is pretty much it. Um, any additional information I'll provide um, at the HOD meeting on Thursday. And um, the, the, key, well, I, the key thing literally is don't lose them. <laughs> Um, and I have to say last year, last year, I don't think there was any keys missing. I, got, I give you guys congratulations. I'm really proud of you. Um, I think there were a few that were a little late, but they all showed up. So thank you all. Um, they are rather expensive. So I think, uh, you don't want to lose them if you can avoid it. And I, as you can see, $75 per key. Um, so uh, anybody have any questions? Um, I see there's some stuff in the chat. I don't. I didn't open it. To see. Yeah, one of the things, Jane, that uh, my apologies for not putting on this, uh, but it, correct me if I'm wrong. For those of you who may not be familiar with, in the eight, head of delegation role, what you should expect in each one of the rooms is a towel, um, a blanket, a fitted sheet, a sheet, and a pillow and pillow case. Uh, you obviously want to bring your own toiletries and that type of thing. Um, they are dorms, um, so it's not a luxurious hotel overnight staying. But again, just a reminder, correct me if I'm wrong, Jane, from my memory, it's the towel, bath towel, um, a blanket, fitted sheet, sheet, pillow, and pillowcase for each one yeah. of them. Yeah, and I thought there were wa uh, was a washcloth and a hand towel, but I could be wrong, there but I did, I did send a, a note out to Drew to ask him to confirm whether that was true because I did have somebody ask me that. And personally, um, for those of you who um, don't like sleeping on plastic, you may wanna bring a um, mattress cover or um, I, I bring a quilt and put it under the fitted sheet because I hate sleeping on plastic. Um, and I also bring my own pillow. It looks like I'm moving in for the semester with all the things I bring. But in any event, um, I, I look forward to seeing everybody and it should go smoothly. Um, I've got a good team that I'm working with um, from Towson who worked with me last year um, on getting everything put in. So just let me know if you have any more questions. Um, I'll be on the call uh, till the end. So if you come up with something, just let me know. Thank you so much, Jane. And Pam Grace, I did see your question. We'll talk about that as far as the parking uh, information here in a minute as well. If if I don't hit on it, your exact question, I'll hang on at the end um, to talk you through that. Okay. There was a question I see from Robin. Um, can Anne leave the keys at the desk for our coaches? So I'm assuming that means that Anne will be put, picking them up on Thursday because she's staying over Thursday night. Yes. Um, so Robin... As long as um, I don't, I don't see any problem with that. I would prefer okay. to give her all the keys and then she can leave the keys at the front desk and let them know. Um, Perfect. That's okay. what we were hoping because okay. we have, um, we have someone coming at noon to be there to greet and then each coach will um, be there by one or two o'clock. So if we could leave the keys there and we'll take all the keys at once. So we don't have people going in and getting them. But okay. that one person that's there at 12 would get would take all the keys and okay. be there to greet people as they come. OK, if Anne can let the, the, the person at the front desk know the name of the person that will be picking up all of the keys for Calvert, um, that would be very helpful. OK, perfect. Thank you so much. OK, thanks for all you do. Great. Thank you, Jane. And one thing I'll, I'll reiterate um, from a previous side again, registration is from 2 to 6 p.m. If you notice, then dinner starts at 6 p.m. and the head of delegation meeting starts shortly thereafter. So uh, as Jane said, if you have any problems, you have her number. Everyone should have my number or Mike Sarnowski's. Um, don't show up at 555 because we'll be shutting that, that registration down and heading over uh, to get ready for the head of delegation meeting. But we know things happen, uh, whether it's delays or traffic issues, et cetera. Just uh, inform us um, and we'll be hanging out there waiting for you. And I'm going to put my cell number in the chat box so everybody has it. Thank you, Jane. Um, meals, I'll go into that. So obviously, as we talked about earlier, 
um, the meals will be provided um, for every delegation member that has been registered through the games management system um, regarding lunch on Saturday and Sunday. Those lunches will be served at the competition venues. The head coaches have been informed to designate one or two people to come pick up those lunches for their given athletes and other delegation members. Um, we will not be handing out one lunch at a time. I know in the past family members have come up, well, I'm just getting one lunch for my son or daughter or relative. Uh, that's going to be through the coaches so that there's not anything missing, et cetera. Um, as I also stated earlier, but to uh, reemphasize the point that um, anyone staying overnight um, who is officially registered and staying on campus will be provided their first meal, if you will, other than cheerleading on uh, that Friday night dinner at the West Village Commons. They will also get their dinner on Saturday night and breakfast both on Saturday and Sunday mornings in the West Village Commons dining hall. Um, registered delegation members for cheerleading uh, will be provided lunch on Friday as they start earlier in the day. And that's the only lunch that's being provided to delegation members on Friday. Um, although swimming competes on Friday, they're later in the afternoon and we've already instructed all coaches and everybody else uh, that lunch is on their own for those delegations uh, members participating in the sport of swimming on Friday. Um, softball, um, that will be a different scenario. Obviously they're offsite in Ellicott City. Uh, we've worked with uh, Jersey Mike's and Melissa Anger and her softball team have collected those lunch orders and uh, submitted those to Jersey Mike's. They'll pick them up and those will also be distributed the same way as others at the competition venue there. Um, I will also ask everyone, just make sure you eat in the designated areas um, and clean up after yourselves as always. One thing I'll really emphasize here, basically most people eat in the concourse of the track um, or in the bleachers, that kind of thing. Please bring extra trash bags, clean up after yourselves. The really big point here is at Bocce, you have to be outside the fence line where the competition is taking place. If you're inside the fence line, you could be barred from the games, if you will, just to make it dramatic. Um, nothing is allowed inside the fence line. That's Towson University rules other than water. No Gatorade, no snack, no granola bar, nothing inside the fence line other than water as to protect their fields. Um, so just want to make sure everyone's aware of that. And then the, the, the swipe card that you'll receive from Jane at delegation registration, you'll get your key. And then the swipe card that will serve as the meals um, in the West Village uh, Commons areas for those dinners and breakfast on the schedule that, that are offered. Um, your delegation lunches, obviously you get your coach. Uh, we're providing with what the coach or you as the head of delegation or your area or county director sent to me in the lunch order. Um, and those will be sent out to those competition venues. Uh, some other things here with the opening ceremony of Block Party. Um, as we talked about dinners uh, at the West Village, Block Party is in the CQ lot in lot seven and Olympic Park in the on uh, Saturday. Uh, leading into the dance and all the fun activities, et cetera. Um, so both the Olympic Park and Block Party, both on Friday and Saturday, will be in the CQ lot. Again, there is no parking in that lot. So even if you um, have some mobility challenges or whatever, we can work with you, but there's no pulling up in there and dropping off. That's all been blocked off. Um, we, we do have some things that we can help with if there are some mobility challenges. Um, as you can see, kind of our standard operation plans there for those. Uh, we have music, we have entertainment uh, with the people who walk on stilts, the kangaroo kids, um, some other sports and clinics, and not, not really clinics, but activities uh, where you're shooting a basketball or things of that nature, have some merchandise sales, that kind of stuff. Um, the opening ceremony, as we talked about, will be a representative or representatives of each delegation. And then the cauldron. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Me to cover that, please. Or, oh, I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, for those who are familiar with it, and for those who aren't, um, we'll, it'll be very similar structurally uh, as uh, in in past years. There will be during the block party parade staging starting at 6:30 uh, for those who are walking in the parade. Uh, folks have until, or HODs or area directors have until Wednesday uh, to respond to the survey. 
uh, at Wednesday at six o'clock. That is a firm deadline. Uh, I will send one more reminder out either tomorrow night or Wednesday morning to, to those who haven't responded yet. But um, we're making decisions on layout and script and so on down the line uh, immediately following that six o'clock deadline. So, um, so again, it's a maximum of four competitors uh, and one coach from each uh, delegation. Please do not ask if you can have more. I can tell you right now the answer will be no. Um, uh, it's four and one. You can have fewer, but uh, uh, no more than four competitors and one coach. Um, so, uh, and thank you again for those who have already responded to the that survey. Uh, we're looking for your number of delegation members and the number of folks who either use wheelchairs uh, or have mobility challenges um, so that we can map out uh, the delegation seating. On the next slide, we'll go through a little bit more detail on that. Uh, but please do get that in. It's going to be critical as far as that goes. Uh, Steve, you want to hit to the next slide? So um, again, uh, what we'll have is a uh, most of the delegation members will be seated in the designated areas. Uh, the CQ arena will open up um, uh, at 630, both for parade staging, but also if folks just want to come in and get out of the the, uh, the heat or whatever the weather is. Uh, it's a nice, quiet time. At some point, uh, probably right around 630, we'll have a continuous loop slideshow going. So a lot of folks, particularly if you have uh, any members of your delegation, athletes or non-athletes who uh, uh, just need a quiet space, this is a great place to, to come in and sit down. We'll have volunteers there serving as ushers to guide you to the places that you sit. Uh, as was mentioned, uh, you will have designated a maximum of four athletes and one coach to represent your, uh, your delegation in the parade. Um, those individuals must check in at parade staging inside the CQ Ariana, I guess that is, that's <laughs> arena, uh, between 6.30 and 7. Um, as you're coming in, like it's the same place for those who have been there before, but if you haven't, as you're coming in, there'll be signs, but it's, you're making almost an immediate right uh, uh, when you come in the main doorway for CQ, uh, the main doorway from the block party. Uh, you can make immediate right, and there'll be a check-in table. They'll have the names of the individuals uh, and uh, will check you in and designate or direct you to where to sit. There'll be uh, chairs uh, for each group of uh, folks that are there uh, and a sign on the wall that shows Kent County or uh, Lower Shore, so on down the line uh, with that. Uh, if they're not checked in by seven o'clock, they're you're gonna be removed from the parade. What I would also ask, please, when you're checking in, have them check in as a group, please. Don't have one you know, individual straggling in and so on. Um, have all all the athletes that are going to be uh, uh, who have been designated and your coach or unified partner or whatever uh, could be even be a chaperone uh, who'll be the additional person who's marching in the parade. Whoever you have designated. Also, if one or more of these folks um, do not make it to parade staging, they won't you won't be able to put a substitute in. Um, one of the the wonderful things I think that have been been particularly um, something for us to be proud of is having athlete MCs. I am part of uh, the thing with that is we don't want to throw, I mean, although the athletes who have served as, as MCs have been quite talented, um, but uh, making additional changes minutes before they're about to start uh, when they've rehearsed and rehearsed is just not a good thing and we don't want to put that on them. So uh, if someone doesn't show, then you're going to be down one or uh, more folks for that. Um, also, and this was a request from a couple of years ago uh, from folks, when uh, when the people in the parade they'll 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 be lined up uh, in a back hallway, and then they'll when they march in, they're going to march in front of the stage, uh, and then come down um, an aisle way uh, alongside where all the delegations are seating seat, seated, and then they'll be directed to go up uh, and sit with their delegation. Be sure to have five seats or however many seats. I know Kent County is only going to have three folks. Uh, so for them, three seats. Be sure to have seats open on an aisle with, uh, within where your delegation is seating or sitting for those folks to sit down. So um, uh, that worked actually uh, pretty well. 
uh, last year, uh, our, and uh, we're, we're hoping that'll go forward. We're oh, our, continue to go forward. This is more athletes and uh, than we had last year. We'd only allow two per delegation, so we're up to four. Yes, I know several years ago we allowed eight. Quite honestly, it was a uh, well, I need to watch my language, <laughs> but it was a mess in the hallway with that many, with 10 people from each delegation. It's just, it just can't handle it. So, um, four, I think is a good, happy medium there. Um, the overall event again should last 60 to 75 minutes. We're not trying to rush through it, but after a long day for a lot of athletes, it's, uh, on top of traveling three or four hours, we want to keep it short, focused. Uh, and such. We don't want it to drag on for an hour and a half, two hours, and so on, uh, which is what we had had in previous years uh, when we were trying to do a full parade, but um, really want to have that focused in there. Uh, on that uh, ceremony or, or, or a ceremony survey uh, were places for you to nominate uh, folks for oaths, carrying the torch, etc. We will be making those decisions on Wednesday night as well, right after that six o'clock deadline, um, and we'll be informing folks, uh, the heads of delegations, uh, for those individuals, uh, will be notified on Thursday, um, uh, and we'll let you know where they need to report and so on. Typically, they're going to check in at about that same time as uh, the folks for parade staging, but they'll check in at the front uh, up at the stage itself. So um, should be pretty exciting um, and such. The only thing I think Steve touches it on on this in transportation. Uh, given uh, last year we had the luxury of all of the buses that were for people who were staying on campus were all going to the same place. They all went to over to West Village. And so it was easy to get folks on. This time, uh, there's three different locations that they'll be taking folks out to. Um, Steve and I are working out whether that'll be just a loop and so you can get on any one uh, or what, but um, uh, it'll be a little different. So do listen to uh, announcements from the stage on when to head out there. Uh, given the number of buses that we have and are anticipating and the, the number of folks who are registered to stay on campus, we basically need one and a half waves of the buses, not even that much, to get everybody who is uh, staying in the dorms uh, from CQ Arena to the dorms. Uh, the one other thing, and we'll touch on this again on Thursday night, uh, that um, if you are if you have a group who is um, not staying on campus, but has come to opening ceremonies first. Thank you. That's great that they're doing that. Uh, we're going to have them go through a different exit. We're going to have them go up to the next level as we've done this before, but go up to the next level uh, and exit out uh, onto the patio where the, uh, the cauldron will be located uh, so they can see that, but it also then doesn't clog up uh, the main exit that is um, uh, where the buses are loading. Uh, it gets a few, uh, some of the bodies out of that space. So. Okay, I think, Steve, I don't think the next slide is ceremony. No, I've, I've got it next covered. Um, Mike, I just want to make sure before I hit enter on my response to uh, Mr. Thomas's question, uh, unless something's changed, we do have a clear bag policy coming yes. in. Today. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that question, uh, Mr. Thomas, Michael. And then Dottie, I think if you can contact uh, Mike directly in regards to your opening ceremony question, not tonight or not during this webinar, but um, offline. Yeah, it may be, Dottie, in that situation that they may not be the, the correct folks to be in the parade. Uh, we can talk about that, but uh, we are keeping it as a cap of five people from each delegation walking through. Um, any one delegation has six. I'm going to hear it from 10 other delegations of why did they get another person. So, um, but we can talk offline. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. Um, transportation, not going to hit on all of these, but I do want to really give just a brief synopsis. Um, as we talked about, we're still working through some details with the shuttles loops, um, the timing of the loops, and um, some details, as Mike mentioned, one of them being the uh, disembarking from um, CQ Arena for the opening ceremony and, and how we get it, everybody back to their dorms. Um, but some things you want you need to know. Um, the Union Garage on campus is open on all levels for parking. Um, the shuttles will run from every location on campus, given the schedule of the day, et cetera, from um, the housing locations to all of the um, parking lots on campus, as well as the competition venues. 
Um, we're anticipating that each location should be touched, if you will, or have a shuttle there um, within 10 minutes, give or take. So, um, Lori, I see your question. Food, food trucks, yes, on, um, I believe it is Saturday night during the dance that there will be pizza bowlies and um, Kona ice um, in lot seven for purchase, uh, pizza slices, basically. Um, and on campus, if the bus is crowded, uh, just be patient. Um, there, like I said, about every 10 minutes, another bus will come by. I know in the last two years or so, people have gotten frustrated. They just missed a shuttle and start walking. By the time they're halfway to where they were gone or where they're going, the bus has already stopped, made a pickup and passed them on the way. So uh, really uh, let people know Towson is doing a really good job with the transportation uh, services. Um, you can also stand on the buses on campus. That's a Towson University policy. Obviously, we want you to be safe, um, have something to hold on to, not something we're highly encouraging, but it is an option as long as you're safe there um, from a Towson University perspective. Um, all, of the, all of the shuttles on, on campus will have lifts for accessibility. And as uh, Jane alluded to earlier, cross campus drive on Friday, um, if you're going to be parked for a, 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 a longer time than just a really, you're just dropping somebody off, you will need to pay at the meter. Um, as, uh, this kind of goes without saying, but just want to make sure that uh, you're aware if there is any reason for um, shuttle or uh, delays in competition or other activities going on throughout the games, um, Towson University will prolong those shuttles to make sure that everybody gets back where they need to be. Um, we will hand out some schedules of the exact shuttle services um, to you guys on Thursday evening. Um, but again, just know if it says it stops at six, if competition goes to six, they know it's going to be 630, et cetera. So that's already built into the schedule. Um, the, the bus is going off campus to softball in Howard County at Kiwanis Wallace, Wallace Park. Um, those do not have lifts. As uh, Melissa Anger and her team checked, there was no need for those. Um, so, and then there will be two teams per bus that will be going from the University Union garage, picking that up around 7 to 7.30 at the absolute latest, heading to softball. Uh, but there will be two teams per bus there. Um, as we mentioned, I did send out the mobile park information. That was last Thursday around 1 to one forty ish um, That was had an attached document with instructions for anybody coming on campus related to Special Olympics or Summer Games that will be there before, let's say, for safety purposes, 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. You need to pre-register through that application online and enter your information. It's basically the um, uh, your, your license plate or the license plates of anybody else um, coming that will be there before 7.30 p.m. on Thursday. Um, really important because they will ticket you. Um, that's how they check with that. You upload your information into their system. They'll check your car. And if your tag has not been input correctly, you will get a ticket. What we also don't want to do is pass that along to everybody. Um, so that's only for people coming before 7 p.m. on Thursday. We are charged per uh, license plate, if you will. So if you send it out to the masses and say, hey, hey, everybody, just do this just in case, just know that Special Mix Maryland will be charged for every use of a license plate that gets entered. So I just want to make that clear. So thank you for your uh, patience on that. Um, as we talked about, uh, mentioned briefly, some of the lots have changed. So if you're used to, you've been in this position or at summer games in years past, um, all of the parking lots have been renumbered. They have been reflected on the map, but it went from like 20 to 26 or whatever over at the stadium complex to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that kind of thing. So it's uh, just just pay attention to those lot numbers. Um, also on campus, you know, if it says this is reserved for this type of person or whatever else, or do not park here, if you're not in a designated parking spot, 
um, you will get a ticket and you or your designated person will be um, responsible for those tickets. Um, and again, just shoot that out to all family members, et cetera. Um, as I said, that, that email was sent from me um, last Thursday at 107 with the instructions on, and we tested it here several times, um, I being one that I'm not very technology savvy, so it worked uh, really good for me. We had a couple other really tech savvy people and one or two other non-tech savvy people who tried it. Um, so it should be good to go for you guys on that. Um, there is one really big place where you absolutely cannot park. Um, and that's in the loading dock by the university stadium. Uh, we have had individuals do that in the past. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now, there's going to be no warnings. If somebody parks there, you will get towed, no questions asked. And I will show you exactly where that is. Um, that is, so these are the big lots at the university um, um, United Stadium, lots four and five. Then you come down the hill here this is the soccer stadium in lot six that's fine it's limited parking but there is parking available right across that street there's a little loading dock that leads up to the minigan room at the stadium that will have no parking signs from us and i believe also from towson university um, there is one or two different people that have authorization to park there but that is off limits to anybody outside of me giving permission. Um, mostly that's for Towson University vehicles and emergency vehicles, that kind of thing. But again, it's the loading dock right across from the soccer stadium into the United Stadium. If you're parked there and I don't know about it, we're going we're gonna to call and get you towed immediately. Nobody wants that to happen. Just want to just wanna make you aware of that. Um, some general updates. Uh, we talked about some of these things. Again, the Olympic Park and Block Party, Victory Dance. The only thing I'll hit on this slide is the theme. Um, as we talked about inclusion, the final frontier, Star Trek, Star Wars, depending on your, on your uh, preference there, um, is the theme of the dance is out of this world. So I'm looking for a lot of like alien costumes and things like that. Uh, should be really, really good. I know a lot of athletes and coaches and partners and teammates and stuff get really into the uh, costumes. Uh, the control center, as we talked about where that is in the Minigan room at University Stadium or United Stadium, um, that's primarily for a few management team members and also for you as heads of delegation or HODs. That's not for coaches unless it's uh, an extreme emergency or extreme situation, something of that nature. And that's not a place for anybody, including our own staff, our own management team, Towson University personnel. It's not a hangout. It's a very intense environment in that room. Um, those of you who've been in there or served in that capacity in the past, you know um, the intensity of that and the importance of, of that being a quiet room so people can deal with emergencies, uh, things of that nature. So again, um, each competition venue has their own control center, but this is for you. If there's a situation that we need to deal with, um, you can come there and we can talk through whatever uh, may be the situation. Um, again, we talked about your housing. Uh, we've looked through that and you'll be notified if there's any issues regarding who was being housed versus who was uh, not officially registered or certified in GMS. Um, and again, Jane hit on the key return. As we talked about, the event guide is, has been uploaded on our uh, coaches resource uh, page on our website. This is the link that will take you directly to that. I believe that is the exact, if not, that takes you right to the summer game section of our coaches resource page, and you just look for the event guide. Yes, it's also now been split out by sport, if that's helpful to folks. So there's a athletics only, a bocce only. Uh, that just happened while this meeting was going on. Very good. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Multitasking. I appreciate that. We're all multitasking um, at this time leading into the games, including you guys as HOD. Um, just a reminder, as far as medical stuff goes, um, we will have medical personnel at each of the competition venues, as well as um, like the Olympic Park and Block Party. Um, you can also uh, get a hold of medical through anybody who has one of our walkie-talkies, if you will other than the walkie-talkies that Joyce uh, from Baltimore asked for. 
Um, so just so you know, um, there's medical at each site, as always, and then anybody with a radio can get a hold of medical. Um, so again, Mike, if you want to hit on a few of these uh, specific... Yeah, so one of the things, um, we are resurrecting our medical committee, and kudos to uh, some folks, many of you know Pam Greenwood, uh, Gina Barley, uh, Alec Travers, and uh, Norma, drawing a blank on Norma's last name. Uh, but anyhow, one of the things that they would like to do, uh, and this could be exceedingly helpful, is if there is a medical emergency and you're coming to grab them, just give some indication as to the level of it. Is it life-threatening? Is it a serious injury? Or is it non-emergency? Someone needs an ice pack. Not that they aren't in pain. Um, uh, but uh, as many of you may know, we ran into a very serious situation at basketball uh, and it wasn't clear um, for anybody on the radio, uh, on the medical uh, crew, um, that we had medical right there. So uh, uh, just to reassure folks, uh, but the other medical personnel, there was no, uh, it wasn't clear what, uh, how serious the situation was. Uh, and we think this will be helpful. It'll be a change, uh, but if you can just try to re uh, remember um, indicating uh, what level it is. We'll be training to the extent that we can, the folks who will have radios in terms of uh, calling medical um, with that. In addition, at each venue, uh, and we'll touch on these at the uh, coach um, uh, coaches meetings, there will be a medical station there. Uh, we are really pleased. It looks like we're going to have uh, about uh, 10 or so medical personnel with us throughout the weekend. Uh, and um, um, so we should be in a position where, unless there's multiple uh, treatments or situations going on, that we're going to have somebody at that medical tent and then somebody uh, out dealing with situations. Uh, we will have people overnight. Um, thank you, Dottie Turner, for uh, stepping up and serving in an overnight capacity. Uh, an old familiar face for many of you, Wayne Lewis, uh, will be back with us, uh, and he will be serving overnight as well. And uh, another member of our team will be the the third overnight at the um, uh, at the remaining venue with that. Uh, and then uh, the last two bullets there is just um, uh, just some general things. Uh, keep in mind, encourage athletes and the rest of your delegation members to be drinking uh, and such, even if they don't uh, feel thirsty. That includes you. That includes your coaches um, and such. It's very easy to forget. And I will admit I can be the worst offender. Uh, the person whose job it was to watch Mike uh, will not be with us this year, Mary Ellen Stevens, a dear old friend. Um, she's not able to make it this year, but uh, I'll need to pay attention myself on that. Um, and also just because if we're indoor doesn't mean um, that uh, you don't get dehydrated, particularly uh, for folks at the pool, uh, as warm as that can be. So um, keep that in mind. I think, Steve, it's back to you. Great. Thank you, Mike. Um, and Michael Thomas, thank you for your question. One thing we didn't touch on on the schedule was um, we uh, do not have a family reception this year, but we do have a family um, opportunity for a meet and greet, and that will be at Healthy Athletes. Um, so if there are family members, Debbie Credito, our longtime uh, family services manager or director, will be at Healthy Athletes um, in the afternoons to um, have a family meet and greet. Uh, how are you? Kind of check in on the families there. Just to clarify also, if folks are wondering why aren't we doing a family reception, because we had almost no one show up last year. I think the, not counting staff and other folks who were running it, I think it might have been three family members. Yeah, who showed. and, and so, going back to pre-pandemic in 2019, I think there was a total of eight non-staff or uh, yeah. actually family members attending the games that that were at that facility or that at that reception so not saying it won't come back at some point but we really need to rethink that uh yeah. so that it is uh effective in what its purpose is so thank you mike and thank you for the question michael thomas uh protest procedure is not going to hit on this um the this is primarily for the the head coaches um but one thing that i do want to let you guys know as a head of delegation is if there is a protest that was denied by the sports rules committee at a given competition venue, and that coach wants to talk to you as the head of delegation to file an appeal to that protest, which was denied, and you want to take that up to the next level, if you will, the games rules committee, 
um, you can submit that. And that, just to be clear, there's not an official appeal form. We just use the same protest form, scratch out protest, put appeal, and then you as the head of delegation can work with your head coach to fill that out, submit that in the overall games control center in the Minigan room, not at the competition venue. And then the games rules committee will work on the uh, giving a ruling on that. Um, we say 24 hours, we'll do our best to answer that within 24 hours. Most, most likely if it's on Sunday, it could take 42 to maybe a, another day or so to gather those people back after we are uh, striking uh, Towson University with all the equipment and everything. So I uh, just wanted to let you know that. Um, weather, just going to hit this very briefly. Um, I hope you guys all know or have faith that Special Mix Maryland, Towson University, as we do with every venue, every competition that, that we host, we constantly look at the weather. We are constantly monitoring that. Um, we don't need people calling and say, hey, have you checked the weather lately? Um, we'll talk about the, one of the slides coming up. Uh, we're actually working on that right now with Towson University. Um, so just know that, that you will be informed of any situations and how um, heads of delegation or your head coaches and other members, whether it's through notifications over a PA system or otherwise, uh, will be uh, directed on, on where to go, what to do um, in the event of inclement weather. Um, one of the things that uh, we will also make announcements for is if there are some winds, high winds coming in, um, we watch that as well, not just thunder, lightning, rain, we watch for the winds. Um, sometimes it may not be windy at that given moment when we have to make a decision to take down pop-up tents. Most of those will be at Bocce or um, in the, the stadium at, at track and field, okay? When we, when we make that call, it's no joke, ladies and gentlemen, take them down and take them down now. We've had some situations in the past where people got uh, created a hostile environment, didn't believe us or didn't want to take their tent down. It is for the safety for everyone, as well as for property damage, personal damage, injuries, et cetera. Uh, but when we make that call, we ask for your cooperation as head of delegations and through your personnel, whether it's other coaches, family members, anybody, take them down. It's no joke. There's a reason uh, that we do that. And if somebody thinks, again, it's not windy right now, we have some information on our apps that's telling us it's coming in the next 10 minutes. If you don't get them down now, you will have an issue. And we all have seen pop-up tents fly through the stadium or you've seen the YouTube videos or whatever else. Want to eliminate that. So just please let people know if you hear take your tents down, take them down. Enough said there. So as we talked about, we're already monitoring the weather. We're looking at it. We're making, we're uh, confirming our evacuation plans, our uh, strategies, our exit plans, all that stuff with every venue. Um, you can see Thursday through Saturday slash Sunday, there's now reports of potential thunderstorms, rain, uh, lightning, that kind of thing. So um, again, we will give you more details uh, with this on Thursday's HOD meeting or head of delegation meeting. Uh, we have an inclement weather plan. If you want to take a look at our event guide that's posted on our coaches resource page, a lot of information it is in there. Again, that's tentative. Uh, we're confirming everything with Towson now. Um, they've had a look at it previously in our event guide. We've worked through them uh, with coming up with those plans. And again, that information will be shared in more, more detail on Thursday because it'll be closer to the games and we'll also have better reports and more accuracy of what we're really expecting other than a five or six day out um, kind of forecast here. Reminders, wear sunscreen, it's gonna be hot. Uh, bring ponchos or whatever, um, you know the drill. Uh, be prepared for any and all weather. Um, again, stay hydrated like we said and no beverages on the competition field. And Joyce, I saw your question earlier. No, we don't necessarily have designated um, lunch eating spaces for you at the competition venues. Obviously, just not on the competition field of play, if you will. Um, or like we said, verdict anywhere inside the uh, fence line. And uh, the delegations know and the coaches have been told where they can eat um, at the different venues. Um, 
Moving right along. Rain playing like a talk. Um, I'm sorry with that as you were talking about food. Yep. Uh, I think we've addressed most of the other ones. Katie was asking whether there's going to be buses from the Tower D over to um, the West Village for breakfast and dinner. And I would throw in the residence towers as well. Yes, currently, yes. So again, we're confirming everything with Towson, but yes, that was uh, one of the things we made sure, especially in the mornings. Now, there will not be a shuttle from Barton, which is in the West Village area already, from Barton to West Village Commons, but from both the towers, there is a, a, a shuttles that will be coming to take you to West Village, then at the end of that West Village area, uh, they will be picking you up to take you to the competition venues. Uh, what I will say is for the softball individuals, um, it may sometimes be quicker once you get done with breakfast to just do that quick walk over to the University Union garage to catch your shuttles off to Ellicott City. But yeah, um, in the mornings and in the dinner and in the evenings for dinner, um, currently we have the schedules or the shuttles running from all residence locations other than West Village to get to that area for breakfast and dinners. Again, we talked about where the uh, event guide is, and we will not have hard copies of that um, for everyone, that kind of thing. Um, we've we've provided that in the past, and to be honest with you, a lot of those we see in the trash or go to waste or not even boxes opened. So um, you have the resource here for our website. If you want to print up a copy of for yourself, feel free to do so. Um, if we need to print one up for you as an HOD, let us know ahead of time. We'll try to print one up for you in the in the control center, but we're not uh, producing um, any hard copies of the event guide. Um, if you have capability to print it yourselves, that's exactly what you'll get at the control center if you need it. Um, it's going to be an eight and a half by 11 regular piece and it will be stapled or binder clipped together. Control center, we talked about the hours of operation, um, just so you know. And again, um, we talked about the coaches resource page and Mike uh, hinted to it, if you will, alluded to it. Um, there's the overall summer games and then each each sport has their own page within that summer game section to get more specifics in regards to um, those individual sports. Mike, I saw you unmuted. Uh, actually, I was gonna jump in. Um, uh, Tina, uh, I answered her question about breakfast. She just wanted to confirm that uh, there's a bus available uh, to go from Tower D starting at 630, uh, which is when uh, most softball teams are gonna have to eat breakfast so they can catch the seven o'clock bus. Yes, that is what we had talked about. And again, we are working with Towson to make sure they they have had a lot of camps and a lot of graduations and um, a lot of them are off today. So tomorrow uh, we are confirming all of the routes. But yes, that is our plan. That is what has been submitted. And we're just verifying and confirming that. And I know, Tina, we talked about that at softball. Um, I still am working with Towson to get a 100% answer. But that is the plan for sure. Um, again, Olymp Olympic Park and Dance, we talked about that. Um, just a reminder, again, dinner will not be at the Olympic Park or at the Dance. That's going to be in the West Village uh, Commons. But as we mentioned, uh, we will have pizza bowlies and um, Kona ice available uh, for purchase. Um, again, that will, and I, I think they'll have both credit card options and cash. Uh, so be prepared for both. That's one thing I hadn't asked them, but I'm assuming uh, they will be prepared for that, uh, both, both payment methods. Um, the Home Run Derby uh, will not be, which it has been in the past, at Towson University. Uh, that will be held at Kiwanis Wallace Park during the day, and the softball coaches um, are all aware of that through those webinars and the information we've shared with them. Um, like I, we talked about with healthy athletes, again, I can't stress it enough. Don't make that an afterthought. Um, obviously, we're here to compete. Competition is your is your one priority. Almost your second priority should be get to the healthy athlete screenings. Um, I'll say it again. It has been life altering, life changing, and life saving, and I'm, I mean that literally. There have been uh, people who have been screened, not necessarily here in Maryland, but in other uh, healthy athlete screenings throughout the world, where they have found cancer and other things of that nature. Where if it wasn't found individuals could have uh, passed within a, a couple weeks. 
immediate operation and everything else, and it has saved lives. So I can't stress it enough. Again, just just hitting it hard, man. I mean, it's it's between meals, between competitions, your sport volunteers, uh, additional support staff from your delegations. Get everybody over there. Get them screened. Mike, I saw you unmute. Yeah, yeah and just and I apologize since I am multitasking. If you said this, but uh, the folks with healthy athletes uh, actually extended the hours, so it is later, uh, and uh, it goes until six uh, on Saturday. Uh, and also has been that we two of the uh, stations have been added on for Sunday morning. So uh, hopefully that will allow uh, some folks, uh, whether we're talking track folks or um, softball, uh, if they're back uh, to be able to utilize um, uh, that, which we realize, given the previous times, uh, was not realistic. So um, kudos to the the, um, uh, the clinicians and all for making that happen. Gotcha. Yeah, and I see a couple of questions coming in about the slides and everything. That's why we started the recording a little earlier. I'm not going to remember all the stations off the top of my head, uh, but they'll be re they are part of the recording. I know there's special smiles, healthy hearing, fit feet, uh, strong minds, healthy hearing, um, and I know there's one or two others that I'm not remembering right off the top of my head. So my apologies, but they will be part of this recording um, and uh, make sure that that's, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's really we'll important. We'll also post that slide on the, um, the uh, coach resource page for summer games as well. No. We'll add some more things on there um, that, uh, that has that. Gotcha. And Mike, I, we never talked, uh, we didn't uh, clarify. Do you want to hit on the uh, layouts of the competition venues or you want me to hit on that? I'm fine either way. Um, yeah, just uh, there was a couple questions that came in uh, as well. Um, if we can hit on it. Uh, the buses for breakfast uh, are the, for the folks in Tower D. Are they picking up in front of Tower D or do they have to go to the end of University Union Garage? We are clarifying that currently. Okay, so we'll let you know on Thursday. Um, let's see. Uh, and uh, oh, that's the same question there. So we'll post that. Steve, I'm fine either way. Um, yeah, no, uh, I think it's it's just a real quick um, layout of some of the competition venues. So you as an HOD have a general awareness. Obviously, the coaches have all seen this for, for through their webinars, et cetera. Um, but this is kind of a layout of athletics or track and field at the United Stadium. You can see, obviously, we're going to be running on the track for the track events. And inside the track is where we have the field events, um, particularly for HODs and coaches. We have the staging area for the track events up against the press box side on ground floor level, obviously. Uh, for anybody who does use a wheelchair, uh, the staging for those individuals is right at the control center area. Um, and then the field staging events um, occur kind of in the L form, um, right leading into where the awards is. And all this layout is the same as it's been in the past. Um, so we are very excited. I think we have three to four individuals doing the high jump individually this Seven. year. Oh, individually have four. Yep. Yep. And then we also have the individuals from St. Mary's, I believe, still I'm entering in the pentathlon. So, um, yeah, good um, Steve, one one note here: uh, we have to talk with Ron and um, and Ryan, but we will likely be relocate relocating the medical tent. Um, it was put at the back of the track uh, so it could be there for ambos coming in and such. Uh, we probably will be moving it over closer to where the control center is, um, just to make it more convenient for for folks. We the amount of times we have to have an ambulance come in. Thank God, knock on wood, has been very little. Um, so uh, makes more sense to have it at a uh, convenient location where folks can uh, can actually utilize it. Gotcha. And as I just to mention this here, this is the ambulance access point is right above. That's a little access road coming into the track level, right behind this awards area and the fence line on the scoreboard. That's where that loading dock is. That you will be towed. Enough said. Moving on. <laughs> um, here's the Bati venue. Uh, you can see Burdick Fields is where the competition will be taking place. Parking, as we talked about, in the uh, Union Garage. Uh, the awards area is back by the picnic area. 
Um, and that's, that's also where the lunch will be distributed uh, for those individuals with bocce. There's also a delegation hangout area um, out here where you can have pop-up tents and things of that nature. Again, just make sure they're they're secured. And if we have to take them down, we take them down. Kind of layout of the cheerleading venue. Again, same, same kind of format. Um, we are looking to expand it a little bit this year um, with more mats in the, in the warm-up area and more bleacher seating, et cetera. So um, you, you basically park in the Towson Center lot, which is four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got to count them. Um, so lot eight, um, that is limited. So if that fills up, you can go down and park at the soccer stadium or back up at lots four and five and catch a shuttle to the competition venue. Uh, but there'll be pipe and drape down the middle. Um, the competition mats will be facing the bleachers and the spectators and then the warm-ups in the back and awards will be presented at the end of the day. Actually, Steve, I'm sorry, could you go back to the track, men, uh, the track uh, diagram? I just want to point something else out. Certainly this applies to the folks at the track, but this does actually apply also to folks with cheerleading and for opening ceremonies and such. So where the words are that says athletics venue, that's where lots four and five, which are those two huge lots that are there. And we have buses there as well. That'll be picking folks up and moving them around. There is a paved pathway that's outside the stadium uh, that goes around um, uh, and it's level, it's accessible and so on, brings everybody back around to the uh, the other side. That can be a very convenient if the weather's good and, um, and such uh, for folks to walk. Uh, there's no, um, if there is any kind of an incline or a decline, it's very minimal. Uh, it's actually designed to be uh, accessible. Um, so a lot of folks don't realize that that's there, um, but it is a very convenient uh, place. So if you're, someone says to park over in lots uh, four or five, you're not walking all down. That, that's a huge hill that you'll be walking down uh, there. And that can be, that can immediately put you off. No, just you, use that uh, paved pathway. It's tremendous. It, it, it actually is uh, pretty quick. I've used it myself before. So yep. thank you. When you're talking about cheerleading, that reminded me of Yeah. No, good that, point. Again, not touched on it. The other thing I'll, I'll briefly mention here is delegation. You can see delegation and spectator seating. That is all on the press box side of the stadium. There is to be no, no seating over on that other side. Um, those gates should be closed, but for some reason, if they're open, there's no walking down those seats and then climbing over and whatever. Um, we will ask people if there's anybody seated in there. Somehow they got in there. We're going to ask them to come over here and sit on this side of the stadium. Uh, several reasons for that, but just want to make everybody clear of that. Um, softball venue, again, at, in Ellicott City um, at our host venue. Very good friends of Kiwanis Wallace Park. Um, again, thanks to Howard County for fostering those relationships. And we want to give them a big shout out for who, having us back again and again for not only the required qualifier, uh, but the last year or two um, for the state championships. Um, also do want to give a shout out to Towson for their, their softball varsity field, as well as Cockeysville Middle School. Um, it, great, great facilities, great partners. This is just a much more conducive um, uh, venue for our needs for uh, state championships and summer games. But you can see the fields that will be utilized, the parking, um, really good complex and, and really good friends of ours uh, doing great work with, with supporting Special Olympics. Swimming venue, um, again, in Burdick Hall, there'll be signs and directions getting uh, getting you to the uh, gyms and, and spaces for delegations and awards, uh, staging and all that. One thing I do want to reemphasize here is there is very limited seating in the bleachers, so we want everyone to respect each other. It's not, I'm going to be here and I'm parked all day. Um, we've asked uh, the coaches to reiterate this to families. Um, you know, watch watch your relative or the individual you're there to support, watch their events, come back out, hang out, whatever. Uh, we will have security um, there monitoring, um, but there's no hanging out um, or sitting on the rails or anything like that. Uh, but just again, just just be uh, working with each other and communicate and, and we want everyone to see their events. Um, so we want everybody to work with each other, with each other to make that possible. Mike, I'll let you hit on uh, your spaceman here with the final frontier and media. Uh, well, not my spaceman. I'm, uh, I am a uh, 
social media um, non-user for the most part. <laughs> um, but anyhow, uh, this is in the program. Also, be sure at opening ceremonies or the opening ceremony, I'm sorry, to pick up a copy of the, of the games program. Uh, we've got plenty of them there. We'll also then, following that, uh, get them out to um, uh, the various venues on Saturday and Sunday to pick up typically at the control center. Uh, but um, anyhow, this just has the different um, uh, tags and such to use with and the um, uh, various social media platforms uh, that you can utilize. Please do take advantage of that if you are um, someone unlike me who uses social media quite extensively. So. Good deal. Thank you, Mike. And again, um, hopefully everyone's aware. If not, here are the are the emails uh, for us. Um, uh, golf carts. Thank you, Dottie. Yes, golf carts will be available um, potentially there on, I was going to say Wednesday, but that's our games management team meeting. On Thursday, they're being delivered to Towson on Wednesday. Um, once we get them all labeled and everything, they'll be ready uh, to hand out. Um, and then we'll have you sign a golf cart waiver. But uh, as we currently stand, you would need to come to the control center to pick those keys up um, no earlier than late Wednesday. But most of you get guys coming in who have reserved or requested um, golf carts through previous email uh, communication that's been out uh, for months. Um, those will be picked up in the control center. That's where you'll uh, pick up your keys, sign the waiver, et cetera. Uh, just a couple of reminders with golf carts also, because we ran into this uh, last year. <laughs> um, I think uh, it was Montgomery County who we were trying to find a golf cart that someone had stolen, and it turned out to be a certain individual who shall not be named <laughs> because it would be embarrassing for him, not Steve. Uh, but anyhow, um, the golf carts are labeled. Uh, please do um, only utilize the golf cart that you, uh, that has been assigned to you or your your county, if you've uh, arranged for one, don't just jump into one. Do not leave your key to the golf cart in there. Uh, that just is asking people, anybody, uh, to do that. I used to work at Merriweather um, Post Pavilion, and uh, someone did that. And the late great John Belushi grabbed that golf cart and was driving it all over Merriweather <laughs> with people chasing behind him. So. Um, uh, and that same thing would happen at um, uh, at, at our venue here. So uh, just uh, be careful with that. Also, when you're parking, be sure you're not parking at some place that's in the way, either for foot traffic or otherwise um, and such. But uh, but just a key reminder. And then last thing, I'm sorry, also, if there is anybody other than you as the HOD who might be uh, driving that golf cart, they also must come and complete uh, the liability waiver for the golf cart not just you. Thank you, Mike. And again, as you park them, just make sure you push hard on the brake to make sure it's parked. And again, I can't reiterate enough to take the key with you. Um, we have had situations where uh, kids, and I say that because they are, you know, young, eight, uh, eight or younger, who are there spectating, supporting their relatives, they get in it, oh my God, there's a key, they push the pedal and off it goes. Um, so again, it, it's not just, we don't want anybody stealing it. We also don't want anybody, uh, getting injured or using it when they should not be driving the golf cart. Um, but you have our contact information here. Um, and again, the, uh, the logo of the games, um, with that, um, as we look for any questions, um, I do want to thank everyone, um, as heads of delegation, it's a big task, a big responsibility to ensure everyone from your delegation is safe, sound, is where they are, when they need to be there, um, and, and all of that, relying on your coaches and other support staff and, and support personnel. Uh, but I know many of you wear many hats, whether it's on games management teams throughout the year, whether it's working at your area program management team, whether you're an actual family member of an athlete or a unified teammate. Um, whether you are a coach or, a, I mean, it, the list goes on. We know many of us in this organization wear multiple hats. Um, without you guys um, and your leadership here um, and what you do for Special Mix Maryland and your local Special Mix program, Special Mix doesn't exist. Um, it's people like you that make it happen. So collectively, um, we're all in this together as leaders of summer games. Um, 
we don't know what we don't know as far as staff or management team members. Issues come up, let us know. We'll work through whatever we need to with you guys. And similarly, you know, if, if you know if you notice something, I think the old saying is, if you see something, say something. Um, you know, let us know. If we don't know it, we can't react or respond. But again, collectively, we're all in this together for the good of the summer games, the good of the families, the good of the coaches, the good of the teammates, the good of the athletes. But I thank you for your dedication in this position for summer games. Um, it is an undertaking. Um, I always say it's very challenging, but hopefully you also uh, have a chance to sit back and see the rewards, right? So with that, I will, uh, will the shuttles be running on Thursday morning? No. First shuttle start on Friday morning. Seeing if there's any other questions I may have missed. I think we got them all, unless anybody, I don't see any hands up. Uh, and uh, uh, Jane, if you're still on, could you hang on for just a moment at the end? Um, sure. Have a follow up. Mike, can you, I did. I can't see where to raise my hand, but I did write in the chat. Just tell me quickly again, um, where um, we need to get a permit for parking on Thursday. Steve, you want to handle yeah, that? Yeah, I will handle that. I yeah, I, I sent an email out to all heads of delegation and area directors on Thursday at 107 or one, uh, it was between one and two. Steve, can you just resend it tonight? Yeah, I will resend that group? again. It's an attached document. It has, it's a Word document. It has step by step instructions, but it's something you need to go online to the website link that will be provided in that. And then enter in, and it, again, I think it's very user friendly. It has very simple step by step instructions. But I'll I'll resend that tonight. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are backpacks allowed in the parade, um, Ellen? I would, from an appearance standpoint, I would prefer that they not be. Um, uh, if someone else from your delegation can hold on to the backpacks. Uh, for the individuals, keep in mind that they need to be clear because they will be uh, things will be inspected coming in. Um, but uh, you, you having a bunch of folks walking in the parade uh, with backpacks and so on down the line just doesn't doesn't scream Olympics. <laughs> so, which hopefully everyone got to see the opening ceremony from Berlin on Saturday. Um, so that was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. but that, that also had a very long parade of uh, delegations and such, so. Mm -hmm. It did, for sure. Steve, can you clarify, uh, Dottie Farrell's asking, do all bags going into CQ have to be clear? I think the, the one exception to that, which would be on a case-by-case -case basis, is if there, if if you have a medical person or or something of that nature for medical and security or, or uh, emergency situations, um, Towson Center or Towson University has made that allow. They may look through it. Um, similarly, with our medical personnel, um, medical bags will be allowed in. Otherwise, from my understanding, everything needs to be clear. Okay. All right. I think if Mike, if you want to stop the recording again, thank you. Everybody. Well, just uh, I'll just reiterate. Thank you and. Uh... Looking forward to seeing everybody in person on Thursday and throughout the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I do see another question. Can can cameras be, be brought into the opening ceremony? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah, no problem there. But what I will ask you to do is please be mindful of the use of flashes. Um, I know that that can be um, distracting to the speakers, the MCs, to athletes and that, things of that nature. So really be cognizant of, of the use of flash photography. Okay. <laughs>